knowing how many calories to eat is a great first step. But how do you get from that to food? Let's start to find out. Welcome back to A Nourishing Pursuit. Last time, I went over a method that allows you to actually calculate your maintenance calories. Once you have that, it's, it's easy to calculate how many calories you need to eat to gain or lose weight. To recap, you select a period of time. A period of several weeks is a good minimum. More is generally better. Over that period of time, you calculate the average number of calories you, eat, you ate each day. You also take the amount of weight amount that your weight changed over that period, divide it by the, the length of the period, and that gives you the average weight change per day. Multiply this number by 500 and subtract it from your average calories, and that will be the calories you need to eat to maintain your weight at a stable level. You can then add or subtract calories based on your goal. You would add calories if you want to gain weight, subtract calories if you want to lose weight. The amount of that modification depends on what your goal is. I don't recommend trying to gain more than about half a percent of but per, half a percent of your body weight per week or lose more than 1% of your body weight per week. If you go outside those bands, you run the risk of gaining extra fat on the gaining side or losing muscle on the losing side. Neither of those are a beneficial thing to have happen. Knowing how many calories you can eat is a good start, but you need we need to do some more work to actually create a meal plan from this. We need to get from calories to food. For me, this takes about three steps. First, we go from total calories to total macronutrients or macros. From that, we go to a distributed amount of macros. How many macros do we eat for, do we need for each meal? Once we have the distributed macros, then we can look at what food choices do we make to achieve those macros. In this video, I'm going to cover the first step, going from calories to macros, and we'll cover the other steps in future videos. There are three main macros, protein, carbohydrates, and fats. You can think of it this way. Proteins are the building blocks of the body. Carbohydrates are the primary energy source, and fats are the primary energy storage. This is an oversimplification. Proteins can be broken down for energy, Carbohydrates can be stored in muscles and the liver in the form of glycogen, and fats are used, among other things, as part of the cell walls. But this simplification will get us started. It's a good place to start. Each macro also contributes calories to our daily total. Proteins and carbohydrates each give about 4 calories per gram. Fats give about 9 calories per gram. Let's look at how much of each macro we need in a day. I'll use my current massing phase as an example. A maintenance phase would be basically the same thing. Cutting or weight loss phase would be handled a little differently and I'll talk a bit about that towards the end of the video. The fitness community has arrived at a standard recommendation for protein consumption. You should eat between 0.8 and one gram of protein per pound of body weight. In my case, I weigh 187 pounds, so that gives me between 150 and 187 grams of protein. If I were eating just plain, skinless, boneless chicken breasts, that would equal about 1.4 pounds per day. The recommendation for fats takes a little different form. Rather than a target amount of fat to eat, they recommend a minimum you should eat, which is 0.3 grams per pound of body weight, or in my case, 56 grams per day. Eating less than 0.3 grams per pound of fats per day for an extended period of time can lead to some health issues such as hormone disruption and etc. You can eat more fats than that, but just remember fats have twice as many calories. So if you go too much overboard on fats, which can be easy to do, you can very easily exceed your target calories for the day. Carbohydrates will fill out the rest of your calories. In my current massing phase, I can eat about 3,010 calories per day. About 750 of those will be from protein, about 500 will be from fat, and that leaves me about 1,760 calories to eat. So divide that by four, and it gives me 440 grams of carbohydrate per day. To give an idea of how much this is, 440 grams of carbohydrates equals about four and a half pounds of baked potatoes, or seven and a half pounds of apples, or more than 14 pounds of broccoli. These values are not set in stone. You can eat more protein if you like, but there's no need to go overboard with it. There's limited evidence to show that eating more than one gram per pound of body weight of protein 
leads to better muscle gain or muscle retention when you're losing weight. Also, protein tends to be the most expensive of the macronutrients. Going over your protein target is nothing to worry about. There's no damage that's caused to your body by eating excess amounts of protein. In most cases, you can swap calories between carbohydrates and fats with very little issue. Don't go below the 0.3 grams per pound of body weight that's noted above. Higher levels of fats can make the diet more palatable. When you're on a weight gain phase, very high levels of fats could lead to more fat accumulation, which is not something we want to have happen. If you're doing more intense workouts, you may want to lead more towards carbohydrates to fuel those workouts. The exact breakdown between fats and carbohydrates is going to depend on your own situation and goals. Unless you're a competitive physique athlete or someone else whose body image is critically important, you probably don't need to hit these numbers exactly. As long as you're in the ballpark and your daily calories are within 100 plus or minus of your total target, you should be good to go. A note on cutting phases. If you're in a phase where you're trying to lose weight, your first step is generally going to be reducing your fats to the minimum of 0.3 grams per pound of body weight. Protein is going to stay about the same. In fact, you're going to want to lean towards more towards the high end of that range. So in my case, more like 187 rather than 150. Carbohydrates is where you have the most freedom to make adjustments. After, making, after reducing your fats, you reduce your carbohydrates, whatever more you need to reach the target deficit for your goal. You don't want to generally go below about 50, 50 grams of carbohydrates per day for sustainability purposes, unless you're doing an Atkins ketogenic kind of diet, which is beyond the scope of this video. So at this point, you should have an idea of what your protein goal is for per day, the minimum amount of fat you want to try and get every day, and your carbohydrates. And you understand that the exact amount of fats and carbohydrates can shift depending on your goals and your personal situation. In future videos, I'll discuss how you distribute these macros throughout the day and the process I use to create meals from those macros. Hope this has been helpful. Please hit the subscribe button down below and stay tuned for the weekly training update. See you next time. This week, I started a new training program. I have been doing my own full body program. The new program is the Renaissance Periodization Male Physique Template with a chest and back focus. There's a link for it in the description. This program comes in a variety of frequencies. I chose the five day version as that fits my schedule the best. My previous program did not have a leg day. The volume for legs was roughly equal to the new program, but it was spread out over all five days. The new program puts more of the volume in fewer days. Other male physique template versions have two leg days, while this one has a single leg day with extra leg volume on the other two days. Sometimes you have to get creative. My Marcy Home Gym system didn't come with an attachment to hold your legs down when using the overhead pulley. I found a 1 inch by 2 inch piece of wood that was long enough to fit between the uprights put my squat pad on it to protect my legs. By setting the safety bars at the right height, I could place the, my makeshift attachment over my legs. Works like a charm, just as good as anything at the gym. I've avoided squats for quite some time due to some nagging ache in my left thigh. With the new program, I've added two squat sessions a week. So far, they seem to be going pretty well. I'm not feeling any pain to speak of, my form looks like it's improving after the first two sessions. The new program has a training volume similar to that of my previous program, but with a different distribution. For example, in my previous system, I would do two sets of chest exercises each of the five days. The new program has six sets of, six sets of chest on two days and one on a third. With my old program, I never had any great issues with muscle soreness or DOMS the next day. With this program, I definitely have DOMS. In most cases, it disappear after a day or so, though. Check back next week for the next training update, or you can follow me on Instagram to get daily training videos. Thanks. You can calculate how many calories you need to have. Need to... 
multiply this number by 500. Proteins and carbohydrates each give about four. four. Yeah. I'll use my, my tongue looking at the camera. Between carbohydrates and, and fats. Yeah. Unless you're a competitive physique. Mm -hmm. I'll discuss how it, how you, 